you refuse to give. Okay. <laughs> Then they will make their own. Abhi sir, kahan tha bhai tu? Hum dekh rahe jab idhar ghar mein khada tha. Mere ke main ek lol ko thi. is very auspicious day very very auspicious day that very merciful 
और भक्ति आचार्य नित्य लीला प्रविष्णु विष्णुपाद सुषमद भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी ठाकुर डिसपियर्ड फ्रॉम दिस वर्ल्ड सो दिस इज नॉट ए हैप्पी डे बिकॉज वी आर सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम हिम एंड ही लेफ्ट अस एंड बेंट बट ही वेन टू गोलोक वृंदावन टू सर्व कंजुगल एंड टू बेस्ट होम मर्सी फ्रॉम देयर सो इट इज अप्पी डे दर्थ बर्थ डे एंड दिस अपेरेंस डे बोथ आर लाइक सेम थिंग वेरी मर्सीफुल टू डू जीवास आर साधव डिवोटिस यू नो यू हैव हर्ड सो मेनी थिंग्स आई वॉन्ट टू हियर फ्रॉम डिवोटिस समथिंग एंड देन इन द लास्ट आई विल स्पीक अबाउट हाउ ही वॉज ग्लोरियस इन ऑल सब्जेक्ट आय चैतन्य महाप्रभु हैज इन चैतन्य महाप्रभु the mercy of all manifestations of krishna and even the mercy of krishna is included understand the mercy of all the incarnations and the himself krishna all are included in chaitanya mahaprabhu in the similar way you can understand the mercy of all acharyas ranging from four acharyas ramanuj madhva vishnu swami nimbadi and all and also all the acharyas like sarup damodar ray ramanand rup ko swami sanatan rup swami and all vishwanath bhakti thakur bhakti nitha all are included in the mercy of the bhakti siddhant saraswati goswami he has given the same measure what rup goswami came has given he has given the same measure what sarup damodar ray ramanand has given he has given the same uh, philosophical gorya vaishnav dharm like jiv goswami he was both he was a very philosopher Vaishnava philosopher, and also he was a Rashik boy. So he was the only. So the Prabhu, Bhakti Sri Dhan Saraswati Goswami. He has given almost all the things that any acharya in our line or for Vaishnava has given. He was so qualified in Vedanta. so much qualified in shrimad bhagavatam in chaitanya chaitam if you see in any angle of bhakti i or oh, he will be seen your complete there are so many arms <coughs> so many arms like माय गुरुदेव पूज्यपाद श्रीधर महाराज पूज्यपाद गोस्वामी महाराज पूज्यपाद वन महाराज पूज्यपाद तीर्थ महाराज पूज्यपाद महाराज गिरी महाराज बै खानस महाराज एंड भक्ति प्रधान स्वामी महाराज ही इज यंगेस्ट और मोज वट ही केम टू दिस वेस्टर्न एंड ईस्टर्न वर्ल्ड but how glorious very soon this had preached over whole world miracle thing so shrila prapat inspired in all his disciples very strong this krishna prem and knowledge transcendent and knowledge 
especially he was very strong in G. Goswami's all classes of theory, he was so learned in uh, all the Sandarbh, six Sandarbh, and Sarv Shambhadi. At that time, when he was present, he was unparalleled preacher. So many Mayabadis, Karmi, Jnani, Yogi, Tapasvi came, but they were all defected themselves by vanishing the face of that Mahapurusha. They used to be defeated and to take shelter of that Mahapurush. I think that it will be very good to, that devotees should also glorify and I will hear and I will be very happy. So first of all, Govinda Bhakat Prabhu, he is trying so much from very morning to up to now, not joining any classes, only reading, they seeing here and there. So first of all, he should be invited to speak about Srila Prabhupada. Uh, anyone speak? Come here. He is senior, so he will speak later, last. There is none, there is not all that. All we are so, but <coughs> all hearing well? Yes. So, he has a loud voice. Guru Maharaj Gurudev has asked me to speak something on this auspicious occasion of the disappearance of Srila Bhaktis Dr. Sosvati Gosh Maharaj Srila Prabhupada. So, uh, devotees will be speaking after me who are much more qualified and will be able to go very deeply into the moods of. Srila Bhakti Siddhartha Prabhupada. So here I'd like to just speak a bit on the life of Srila Prabhupada. So as we all know, he appeared in Jagannath Puri and it's explained that during the time of Lord Jagannath's Rath Yatra, that Bhimal Prashad, um, he was, Lord Jagannath, he's, the car stopped outside the house of Bhattivno Thakur for three days. And the mother of Bhimal Prashad, um, Srimati Bhagwati Devi Dasi, she brought the little baby out and the garland of Lord Jagannath, it fell on and garlanded um, little Bhima Prashad. It stated that when he appeared, that astrologer um, stated that he had qualities of a Mahapurush. Mahapurush means greatly liberated person descending from the spiritual world. That not only did he have it said that in Mahapurush that there are 32 symptoms of Mahapurush. But not only did he um, have um, some of these qualities, eight of these qualities, or 16 of these qualities, but he had all 32 qualities of a Mahapurush. And from very young, then he started to manifest qualities of a greatly liberated soul and great eternity. When he was about two years old, then um, some fruit was brought into the house. And spontaneously, just as um, Raghav Pandit Prabhu, his child, 
will sp spontaneously go for things as he's going for the bell right now. <laughs> so little Bhima Prashad, spontaneously he went for mango and went to take mango. And immediately, Shilabhakti no Thakur, he stopped him and he said, no, that actually this mango has not yet been offered to Girihari. So why are you taking that which has not been offered? You should not do this. And though he was only a small boy, less than four years of age, then immediately from that point, he, vowed, he took the vow that he would never take um, mango again. So such determination. We see that sometimes we may make some determination that we may not take um, some food which has been cooked by um, non-devotees and often we may make that determination then after some months we're traveling then we eat crisp and this and that and so many things. But he made this determination when he was about two or three years old and for the rest of life he would never take. Swamiji to the A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, he would often comment that even when the disciples of Srila Prabhupada would offer him um, mango, then he would not accept. He would say, no, that I have, that I have made offense in this regard, and he would not take it. So, um, as he grew up, he was trained by his father. Actually, he was a Shrutida. Shrutida means that he had such great memory that whatever he heard, he would never forget. And not only would he not forget, but he had perfect ability to be able to present whatever scripture he read according to perfect Siddhanta. How long should I speak? So he, um, so he, he, um, for instance, by the time he was six, seven years of age, he memorized all Bhagavad Gita. Not only did he have perfect memory of Bhagavad Gita, but he was able to speak Bhagavad Gita in any audience with um, perfect knowledge of all Siddhanta. It stated that even in learning English, that he learned English just by reading the Oxford Dictionary. So his English was so high class that to understand him, um, his English even, an English person could not understand that it was of such a high caliber. And when he spoke Siddhant, um, I've heard it said that when he would speak, um, give discourses, that the Siddhanta was so powerful and so high caliber that all the disciples would have to go and hear from another disciple to explain what it is that the Guru Maharaj had explained. Though his disciples were so high quality, many of his disciples, just as when a great liberated soul descends from the spiritual sky, then along with him associates will come. As Krishna, when Krishna comes, Krishna does not come by himself, but he comes with so many different, with his associates, just as we are hearing before, that before Krishna came, then Balaram he came and prepared the way. So similarly, when these great personalities they come, then they come with the associates who um, are sitters in their own right. So, um, as he grew up, he showed his great knowledge, um, his great intellect, by being very erudite in, in, in school, even though he never really studied his schoolwork. Rather, he would always keep with him books of Naratan Das Thakur, like Prem Bhakti Chandrika, Pratana, and whatever time he had, he would absorb himself in the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <coughs> he said that he did not want to waste time in, in these different materialistic studies, but rather that his sole object in life was to be one-pointed towards the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, so, He also, he was very proficient. He went to um, college in, I think, was it in Calcutta? And he was very proficient in astrology and also Sanskrit. And he re for his proficiency in astrology, he, re he re received the title um, Siddhanta Sarasvati. 
But after some time, he gave up his um, education, though he was, as I mentioned before, he was um, so erudite, because he said he, that if he um, showed so much scholarship in school and became so um, um, accomplished in his studies, that then this would take away from his um, devotion life. So he left. He left um, school and. He absorbed him. He, he thought that better he would absorb himself in um, his devotion life and, and bhajan. So there are many different pastimes that went on with um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada. So I will just touch on a few. He was the. Um, his father, Srila Bhakti Nantako, he trained him in his publishing work. So he became expert in all different aspects of publishing, editing and even writing. One example is that um, there was some dispute between smarter Brahmins and um, Vaishnavas because the smarter Brahmins, they were saying that unless one was born a Brahmin, then he had no um, right to worship the deity. And also they said that even if one um, was transcendentally situated, that if he wasn't born a Brahmin, then he could not be Guru. So, they, they set a date for, um, for a discussion to be held on this subject. And it was expected that Srila Bhakti no Thakur, that he would go. But during this time, Srila Bhakti no Thakur, he became very, very ill, and he wasn't able to go. And he was, Srila Bhakti no Thakur was so, um, outraged by the situation, that he would loudly exclaim that is there any, isn't there anybody who will be able to um, present the proper siddhanta, the proper teachings? And hearing this, then um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, um, then he wrote a paper in which, uh, I forget the name of the paper, anyway in the paper he had different categories. First of all, he explain what is a Brahmin and then he glorified the virtues of a Brahmin and then he after he explained what is, Vaish, what is a Vaishnava and explained um, how a Vaishnava is superior to a Brahmin and that a Vaishnava just as Srila Snap Goswami had explained that just as um, bell metal can be turned into gold by an alchemical process then similarly even though one may not be born a Brahmin but if he has taken proper diksha uh, from a bona fide spiritual master and undergone the process of diksha and become um, fully fixed in Sambandha Gyan, that he is actually a Vaishnava and much superior than just a Brahmin. So when he presented this paper to Srila Bhakti no Thakur, Srila Bhakti no Thakur, he became very, very happy and gave him his blessings. And then he went to this um, assembly of um, pandits and Vaishnavas. So to make a long story short, um, the Brahmanas, they presented their arguments, and then when Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, he started to present his arguments, his arguments were so powerful and irrefutable that after three days of debate, um, the smarter Brahmanas, they could not say anything. And there was a very big crowd, there were thousands of people who came to this assembly to, to witness. And after, they became so hysterical, seeing that an Acharya had emerged, that they started to um, storm to get the dust of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur's um, lotus feet. So the police who were there to protect him, then they forcibly, they picked up Srila Prabhupada and then they put his feet in a big vat of water. Huh? Even though Srila Prabhupada had, had a vow that he would not accept, he, would, he did not want anybody, did not allow people to touch his lotus feet. And even when anybody came to offer him obeisances, he would return the obeisances. Even after he had thousands of disciples, he would always um, um, address his disciples as, as Prabhu. So in this situation, they forcibly, against his will, they picked him up. And he was a very big person. They picked him up and then they put his feet in the vat. And, and then they allowed the upsurging crowd of um, um, thousands of people to come and they took the water from his lotus feet, and in this way they were pacified. So, 
also um, explained that when he was, I think when he was in his teens or early twenties, that one time he had a debate with um, one Shastriji, who was very, very renowned and expert. I think this was just in astrology. But even though he was still just a, 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 young, a youngster and a student, actually, and he was debating with this Shastriji, he defeated him so profoundly that the person passed in his pants and had to run away. <laughs> so in this way, he would travel. After some time, he, he traveled all over India, preaching the um, doctrines of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he became, and he was so powerful and um, indefeatable that um, when others, opposing elements would come across him, then they would, they would run away. Uh, he was known as Nishringa Guru. Um, then the pastimes of uh, when he took initiation from Srila Guru Kishodas Babaji Maharaj to explain that after um, Srila Bhakti no Thakur, he had established Sananda Sukhada Kunj in, um, on the other side of the um, Ganges and the other river is um, Sarasvat Jalangi. 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 On the other side of the Jalangi um, river, then um, one Paramahamsa Sadhu, he came from Vrindavan, his name was Srila Gorki Shodas Babaji Maharaj, and he was renowned and very, very renounced. He had, practically speaking, he had no possessions but his Japa Mala, um, and he had um, um, just very few possessions. And upon meeting um, Srila Prabhupada, then he, he was um, immediately, there was this um, spontaneous attraction between the two. And he gave him some knots of, um, was it rope, that um, he used to use for, that he gave him for chanting, for chanting Japa. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, he was very fortunate that in this place, he would sometime hear discuss, discourses um, which included Srila Gaur Das Babaji Maharaj, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And in due course of time, then Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he inspired him, encouraged him that he should, he should go and he should take diksha from Srila Gaur Das Babaji Maharaj. But upon going to Srila Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj, Srila Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj had, had made the vow that he would not accept any disciples. And when he went, Srila Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj said, Why are you coming to me? Uh, that you were um, such an erudite scholar. And already Srila Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj had so much um, honor for Srila Bhakti Nautako and for Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada. He said, You are coming from such an aristocratic family. Because Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, he came in lineage from um, Narutam Das Thakur. And he said, you're so learned, you have the title Sarasvati Thakur, and practically speaking, I am illiterate. But because Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, he was not an ordinary soul, an ordinary soul would not be able to differentiate between whose Srila Gurudev was just explained two days ago that a Kanishta or a Majam Kanishta will not be able to differentiate between who's Uttam, who's Majam, and who's Kanishta. And in this way there might even be some offenses made, or one may honor somebody who's a Kanishta as a Uttam, Adhikari. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta knowing, and also being inspired by his father, then he was persistent. But in his heart he knew, because he could differentiate who was, what was the um, level of Srila Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj. And he begged him for initiation. And Srila Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj he said that first I have to ask Mahaprabhu and if Mahaprabhu wills. So there we can understand that what kind of person can have direct contact with Mahaprabhu and that when Mahaprabhu tells him, then he will um, reply if he can give initiation or not. By this we can understand what is the position of Srila Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj. So then Srila Prabhupada he went about two or three times and each time Srila Gaur Kishodas Babaji Maharaj said no. Um, I actually, I forgot to ask Mahaprabhu. And then finally, exasperated, and by this time, Srila Bhakti Thakur, he was also 
um, he spoke on his behalf to Shilu Gawki Shot, that's Babji Maharaj, that please, um, be merciful to him. Because if you're not merciful to him, that he will give up his life. He cannot maintain his life like this. During this time, practically, he had stopped eating. Uh, he was in such a state. And finally, he just broke down crying at the lotus feet of Gawki Shot, that's Babji Maharaj. And um, he said that if you do not accept me, then I will give up my life. So seeing the determination of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta in this way, showing how to approach Guru. That the tendency is that because Guru is so merciful, what have we done? Srila Gurudev is coming and he's, he's traveling all over the world. What effort are we making? And rather he's pleading with us. But actually it's stated in Shastra that one should approach Guru in such a desperate mood as if one is, one's head is on fire and that one needs the mercy of the cooling um, effect of the lotus feet of Guru to put out this fire of material existence. So this way, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, though he's a Mahapurush, a liberated soul, an eternal associate of the Lord, but still he's showing how he's crying and he's at the point that he's ready to give up his life if he does not get this mercy of Diksha from his Guru. So this melted the heart of Srila Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj. Already his heart was melted, but to the effect, to the point, that he consented to give him Diksha. And, and so he asked him to go and take bath in the Ganges and when he came then he initiated him. Um, the name was Dait Vasha Banavi Devi Daita Das. So um, there are many other pastimes but I think there are Many other Vaishnavas, much more qualified and um, realized. Um, and also, Srila Gurudev will speak, so time is limited. It's already almost 12 o'clock. So, I'll stop now. Now, I'm requesting Srimad Bhakti Rishikesh Maharaj. He should come and to speak something. <coughs> you can take? <coughs> um, I think uh, for my for my own uh, welfare, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur's writing was most inspiring for me, um, maybe because I had some education, and to just hear his delivery was so uh, um, invigorating to me. So I was always reading whatever I could get from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur. And just recently, I was speaking with Keshav, Krishna Keshav, Brahmachari, one of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's disciples in Jagannath Puri, and he related a story to me that I hadn't heard before. So there's so many stories to tell, but I'll just tell you this one. Um, maybe Guru Devi could help me a little, because I can't remember the last. <laughs> the oldest brother of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, his name was? Did we know Prashad, perhaps? The what? oldest. Tit Maharaj Te. Oldest. The oldest son of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Oh, Lalita? No, no, it was a small subject. Lalita? No, it was a small subject. It was another, it was another son. It wasn't Lalita. I, I think we know Prashad, but I'm, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, the oldest... Uh, Bhimla Prashad was number seven or number eight son of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Fourth. Fourth son. Are you sure? Well, fourth son or seventh child, perhaps. Anyway. At any rate, he was, he was the favorite of the eldest son, who I think his name was Vinod Prasad. No, no, no. No? No. Anyway, whatever it was. But this was an extraordinary um, exchange. It's a shame I can't remember all of it. Kamala Prasad, Bhimala Prasad, Kamala Prasad one. And also, Kamala Prasad. Lalita Prasad, Lalita Prasad. Lalita Prasad. I don't also not remember. Go on. 
but his extraordinary pastime was that he became ill, um, and he was the favorite of, of his elder brother, um, Bhimla Prashad was. Very, very close they were. And uh, his elder brother became ill, very, very gravely ill. And uh, so his elder brother told one of the brothers and sisters, please bring Bhimla Prashad. Yes. And uh, uh, he said, I need the dust of his lotus feet. And uh, so this is very strange for the older brother to ask for the dust of the lotus feet of the younger brother. And Bhaktivinoda came to hear about it. And he came to the eldest son. And he said, what are you doing here? You know, Bhima Prashad is only a boy. By that time he was seven, eight years old. He's only a boy. Of course he'll give you the dust of his lotus feet. Why are you asking? And he said, because in my previous life I was a Vaishnava Acharya. And I made offense to Bhimla Prashad. And I, I have to get the mercy from him uh, or, or I, my life is incomplete. So then Bhimla Prashad gave the dust of his lotus feet and the, his elder brother passed away a few days later. What I was told. At that time, when he was passing, then Raktila or Ramani Sampradaya came automatically in his forehead. Uh -huh. I did offense the lotus feet of Bhimla Prashad. Uh -huh. So he must forgive me, then I can die very easily. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the only other, uh, the other consideration that I have, that I always ask the devotees... Perhaps the name was Achyuta. No, no. It was Haddi Namchila. Achyuta. The only other consideration that when I speak to devotees about Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, I, I can't really tell who is Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, so I ask them a question. I say, uh, who was it who set up the tirtas of Krishna in Vrindavan? It was Mahaprabhu and his disciples. They set up all these tirtas. And who was it that set up the tirtas of Mahaprabhu? It's Bhakti Siddhanta. So who is Bhakti Siddhanta? <laughs> So, you can see the same thing. You can see the same thing. You Who will speak now? So today is such an auspicious day, as Guru Dave was saying, appearance day or disappearance day, to fix our minds on these most elevated personalities and to have the opportunity to speak about them and hear about them is very invigorating for the consciousness. And the pastimes of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Maharaj Prabhupada are so inspiring for all of us, his tremendous strength of character, his um, erudition, his, his scholarship in his writings will always elevate our consciousnesses just recently in the harmonies that we produced in Vrindava, there's a, some very beautiful articles and I was reading one of them and then I decided to take notes on it and I was aware that every single word without exception was pertinent to what Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj was saying. So his um, writings, as uh, Rishikesh Maharaj was saying, are very, very valuable to us all to 
become inspired and understand Guru Tattva, all Tattvas. We can get so much light from Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj. So there are so many pastimes and stories connected with this preaching. Um, I will just relate one or two very briefly. There's the um, wonderful example of when Srila Bhakti Prakyan Keshava Maharaj was in the mud, I think in Calcutta or Navadri. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj had asked him to uh, take one boy out of the temple. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj had, there was one uh, devotee in the temple, he was a little obnoxious in his behavior. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj had said to this devotee, actually you are the best devotee in the temple. And the devotee had sort of believed him that actually he was the best devotee in the temple, so he had become a little disturbed by that himself. And he was causing disturbance to the other devotees. So finally, after much difficulty, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, he asked Srila Bhakti Prakyan Kesha Maharaj to please you take this boy's baggage and you ask him to leave the mud. So in that evening, Srila uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj had found that actually the boy was still in the mud and Srila uh, Bhakti Prakyan Kesha Maharaj was nowhere to be found and eventually they located Srila Bhakti Prakyan Kesha Maharaj and then he was brought before Srila Bhakti Siddhanta and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta asked him why you didn't take this boy away, I gave you instructions to do this. So Srila Bhakti Prakyan Kesha Maharaj, he said, because I know your heart is so soft that you are asking me to do this, but actually tomorrow you will be regretful of this and you will, you only came here to help the conditioned Jeeves. So he, knowing the inner mood of his Guru Maharaj, he didn't follow that instruction. So that's a small pastime of this. There's another pastime also in uh, Calcutta, just before he was about to leave his manifest pastimes, there was a man who was in charge of running the mat, and he was a grihasta, and he was taking a lot of the funds from the collections and using them for his, his own livelihood. He had his son being nicely educated and so on. So the Mount devotees became very disturbed by this. And actually all the sannyasis headed up by Srila Srila Maharaj, they approached Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj and they said, we're very disturbed by this uh, devotee who is taking your funds. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, he became angry with the sannyasis. He said, I am coming to give bhakti and this devotee is just taking this money and you are not feeling compassion for this devotee. That is all he can see. All he can see is that he wants to take this material wealth. I am giving the most divine transcendental wealth. And he's only taking this material wealth. You should all feel very compassionate for him and help him. So like this, he would see with such clarity and transcendental vision that he would teach by every example, even apparently negative aspects, he would always very clearly uh, give his instructions. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj is always present with us. There's never a moment when he's absent, even though his manifest pastimes are concluded, but still he is completely uh, with us at every moment. And we can meditate so uh, much on many of his past notes. So, so. Mm -hmm. so. No. Shiman Namin Krishna Vidya Lankar Prabhu will speak. Uh, as much as time he can speak. Because he has written so many points in his 
I will do good as a little bit. Yeah. Yes. So he... Seven points he has written. So many points. One day for each. He will discover new new things. Up to 1, 2, 3, 4 p.m. you can speak. <laughs> I will speak there. But Krishna Das Prabhu will become hungry. Sri Guru Dev Vardhan me, the very price of Guru Pāra Bhakti Siddhānta Sarasthi Vasyam Chakur. In his Pranam Mantra, we have seen Namam Vishnu Padaya Gaura Prishthaya Bhutale Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Not Gaura Prishthaya Have you seen Gaura Prishthaya? No, Krishna Prishthaya Oh, say new new advent New new advent So here, Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale and Gaura Prishthaya Bhutale is same Because Krishna is the same this is second invention. <laughs> oh, so many inventions. This and Namang Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale or Gaur Prasthaya Bhutale. I have never seen any any book or any anywhere. New new book will come. New book. I have never seen anywhere. New book. This name is new new. Ah yes, new new. Naveen. Naveen. New new. Go on. So what is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhuistam? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when Krishna in October Lila, he was thinking that I could not realize. Three things in a proper lila. I hope that all of you know this, the cause of Mahaprabhu's incarnation in this world, Sri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima. So Krishna could not taste, come here. So he took the complex sign of Srimadhi Radhika and his and her mood and became Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Mahaprabhu wants to distribute, Mahaprabhu came in this world for two reasons. One, Premaras Nirjas Korite Asadhan, Ragmarga Bhukti Loke Korite Pracharan. He wants to taste the essence of Premaras. This Premaras is Radhaya Pranayu Mahima, this in three slokes, in this slokes in three points in the mention, what is Premaras Nirjas. And Ragmarga Bhukti Loke Korite Pracharan. And Mahaprabhu wants to preach the Ragmarga. Ragmarga means, if we want to know Ragmarga, we have to know at first, what is Ragatmika? After that we can know what is Ragamarga, Ragatmika and Ragamarga. Ragatmika means, Iste Sarasiki Raga Paramahavishtata Bhavet Tanmuija Bhavet Bhakti Sattra Raga Otimika Odita. Iste Sarasiki Raga, Iste means here Krishna. There is naturally affection and naturally rag, attachment for Krishna. And they are so many, they are too much absorbed by his service. So if this kind of avishtata is there, they call ragatmi. Just like I give you an example, then you can understand. If there is one glass and there is some color, if you put the color, you can take out the color very easily. But if you melt the glass and put color, <coughs> then it will mix as a manner you could not take it out by any so by any as if he could not take it out. So, Raga was there in soul of that who has too much affection for Krishna, that means that Vajavasi. So, Iste Sarasiki Raga Paramahavishvata Bhavet Tanmaija Bhavet Bhakti Sattvale Raga Dvikodita That means Vajavasi has so much affection for Krishna in their soul. So, they are called Ragatmi, who is eternal associates of Krishna. They are called Ragatmi. And Ragatmika Anusritta Jasa Ragan Gochate. He who want to follow Ragatmik Jan, that seeing their activity towards Krishna or hearing their activities, service propensity for Krishna. If any sadhak 
any devotional practitioner want to serve Krishna same mood, same way, they call Raga Nuga. So Mahaprabhu wants to preach in this world Raga Marga Bhakti. That means how, how we can adopt the Raga Nuga Bhakti. Mahaprabhu wants to preach this thing. So for Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Swarati Thakur, he came in this world that Krishna blessed her Bhutale. That means Mahaprishna in form of Mahaprabhu want to distribute Raga Anuga Marga, Raga Marga Bhakti. Sri Saraswati Thakur also came in this world to preach Raga Marga Bhakti. And it's another Pranam Mantra. Sri Varsha Bhanavi Devi Dvaitaya Kripadhaya Krishna Sammandha Vigyana Daine Prabhavi Namaha. Oh, he came to give us relationship with Krishna. Day before yesterday, during morning walk, Srila Gurudev told about Samandha again, who is Madhyam Kanishtha. He has relation, what kind of relationship? That relation with Bhagavan and Jeev, relation with Bhagavan and Maya, relation with Jeev and Jeev, relation with Maya and Maya. So, Sarsatha will go for Kiyam to... Maya and Maya? Jor and Jor. And Jeev and Maya. Is there any difference between Jod and Maya? Or same thing? Same thing. Same thing. Jod, manifestation of Maya potency, it is called Jod. So what is defined between two things who came from the... Understanding what he is telling? What he is telling? Maya and Jod are both same thing. It is quite wrong. Maya is potency or power of Krishna. Power. And it has been divided into two. Mahamaya, Jog Maya. And the things which has been transferred from the Maya is Chetan Arjad. From Jog Maya, Sarup Shakti coming, transferred. They are chit vastu. And the matters which has come from Mahamaya are jad, like all these things in being. So Maya and jad are not one thing. The things which has come out from Maya, they are jad. Mahamaya. So, we cannot say that Maya and Jada are same thing. There is some difference. So, try to speak very carefully. Or you could not speak. You should try. Okay, so difference between Jada and Jada. So, Prabhupada... Relationship. The relation between Jada and Jada and relation between Jeev and Jada so this five kind of relationship, the Samandagan, Madhyam Kanishtha has. So Prabhupada came in this world to distribute this kind of relationship? No. So what kind of relationship? Jeev is eternal servant of Krishna. And he has some relationship in his constitution, in his constitution form. Some are dasa, that they think Krishna our master, and I am his servant. It is called servitor moon. And Sokha, that Krishna is my friend. And Vatsala Krishna is our son. And Madhur Krishna is our man, Vilave. This kind of relationship Prabhupada wants to give us, God wants to preach us. So Krishna Samandha Vigyana Dhaini Prabhavi Namo. Not only Samandha. Prabhupada is so merciful, Kasle is merciful, Karunaya Vidya Vandera, that Samandha Vigyana, Vigyana means knowledge with realization. So Prabhupada is so merciful, to whom you give this knowledge, the Samandha Gaya, he was servant of Krishna, he make him understand and make him realize that what kind of servant he is. That means the disciple of Prabhupada, who surrendered himself totally, they realize themselves the one kind of servant, 
they are and he was proved not possibly make the realization also can you tell what he has told what do you understand said that shall the prophet has come not just to give um and not to knowledge of ordinary relationship just he has not come to give this not just that but he has come to give um even more oh it is quite wrong you should tell carefully he has come in beginning this all knowledge is these are samandata and the juice of all these the essence of all that sum so both he has come to give both things hum dono kewal eta dite asen ni eta to eta shabd er bhul hoye jay eta khub sawdhani dekha to eta koi ki bollo ek samman khub sawdhani purvak bollo nahi to sab mis gaye hoye jay हमको ऐसा इस सभा में नहीं बोलना चाहिए किंतु बाध्य होकर के बोलना चाहिए चलो बोलो आई डोंट द प्रोपर नॉट केम ओनली टू डिस्ट्रीब्यूट हां ये सोटल लाइक दिस यू आर नॉट सॉरी आई एम आल्सो सॉरी आई अंडरस्टूड लाइक दैट नाउ गो ऑन नेक्स्ट पॉइंट विष्णु दत्त eternal associate of vishnu tattva also krishna krishna eternal associates they are called agatmi gyan he want to serve like them they are called raganuga but he want to serve krishna like swarup goshai par seva sadhak rupe no sidh rupe na chatta hi in external form jai rup goshai he eternal associate he is Serving like a, an ordinary sadhak, he want to teach us. So he is acting like an ordinary sadhak, and is being sankha purva karama gan nuti vi this, and by his inner mood, like he is doing what he is serving, he is serving different couple in form of rupa manjari. So he want to serve like rupa sai par, like under guidance of rupa manjari, he want to serve different couple. They are called Rupanuga. All the Rupanuga are also Raganuga, but all Raganuga are not Rupanuga. Why? Because Rupanuga has spe- one speciality that they want to serve under guidance of Rupa Manjari. So, who is want to serve under guidance of Raganuga? They are Raganuga and Rupanuga are special. They are classification. that being raganuga they have one special category they want to serve divine couple under guidance of rupa manjari so they are rupanuga so prabhupad sasasa came in this world he did this that we can desire to serve like under guidance of rupa manjari and we are giving our identification that we are gauri of krishna our gauriya prashna chila prabhupad told who is gauriya let us explain in a one is lecture that gauriya means who want to serve divine couple being in mazur ras in kanta ras they are called gauriya chila prabhupad in his advices he told that who will not serve so many devi gades We have seen this picture also. Alingam Gorangmanne Belopatta Jalopasam Nautatra Salajukta Nam Nana Devika Sevi Nam. Better we can embrace crocodile and tiger. Then what will be happen? Then we see or die. So the proper is telling: if we embrace crocodile or tiger, 
we, we may die, we see or die, no problem. Then we can spoil our whole lifetime. But if we serve so many demigods, then so many lifetime will go. We'll spoil to come in Krishna consciousness being one point eight. So Prabhupada instruct us don't serve so many demigods and demigodes. So Prabhupada instruct us being tolerant. Be tolerant especially for Matabasis who live in mod, they have to learn how to tolerate. Otherwise you could not increase in Krishna consciousness, increase in Krishna consciousness. It is another advice from Pachor, our duty to serve Mathur Viraha Kathar Vajavasi. What do you mean by Mathur Viraha Kathar Vajavasi? When Krishna left Braj, he came to Mathura. Dr. Dream brought him in Mathura. Then all Vajavasis, they are suffering so much for Krishna, they are lamenting for Krishna. That Krishna came in Mathura. So we have to serve the Javasis who are Mathur Pirahapas, that means who are lamenting for Krishna when Krishna came in Mathura. We have to serve the Javasi who are lamenting for Krishna, that kind of we have to serve the Javasi. That means in this planet who are, who is Sadha, Medishitta and Sadha both, who was doing bhajan in this world and teaching us that being is an associ eternal associate is acting like a sadha and is serving in mood of Vajavasis we have to serve him then we can advance in Krishna consciousness and Srila Prabhupada gave us so many advices so so many Vaisnava also here and we shall hear from Gurudev and Due to my poor knowledge of English, so which I misguide you, so please excuse me. Bansha Bhagavatam, first of all, pass into Bhagavatam. You want to hear something more, but time is now. Twelve and half. What should we do? Yeah. Huh? What should I do? Do you want to speak there? Huh? They want to offer you also something. Oh. Oh. So you should bring. And I think I should express all these things there. Today you should come there earlier. At 4.50, uh, at about 5, we can begin our classes. Uh, so that for one hour, one hour we can speak and another one hour we can speak on subject, Srimad Bhagavad. So only two words I am speaking. <coughs> On this subject, Namong Vishnu Padai Krishna Pushtai Bhutale, Sri Shimadvati Siddhan Sarswati Tinamine, Sri Vasudhan Vide Vide Tai Kupabdhe, Sri Krishna Shambandha Vigyana Daine Prabhavinma, Madhu Jog Jol Primad Shilpan Bhaktas Gautana Shakti Vigraha Namastati, Vancha Kalpataru Hasik Basindhu Dhe Vacha Patitanam Pamani Bhu Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Parim Tadayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Nam Nei Gautra Kishore Bhakti Siddhan Sarswati Goswami Thakur is associate of Krishna and also Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as you have heard from Navi. Oh. He was not a conditioned soul. He has come directly from Golok Vandab to preach the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna. Especially he is the associates of Srimati Radhika. 
she bashed upon me. So when he appeared in this world, in the house of the Bhakti Vinod Thakur, at Uri, as a son of Sri Bhakti Vinod Thakur, so many symptoms were that in his body. Tilak in all his all his body fell and there was a sign of Tulashi Pikanti Malahi. If I will wash here, you can see line of Tilak. Because from beginning and doing. But in his body it was very 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 bad. Very apparent. And prominent. Because his body was constant. So everything was like that. And mother his mother told to Sila Bhakti Vinotha. Then Bhakti Vinod Thakur told this, oh really, he is a transcendental person, any Vaishnava. I have not seen anywhere these things. So it has been told also, Shampradaya Vihina Ajay Mantra Ste Vipalamata Atu Pallo Bhavyaschant Chatvara Shampradayana Shri Brahma Rudra Sanaka Vaishnava Kshiti Bhavana and Purushottama Jutkale Purushottama. That a very great acharya, Vaishnava acharya will come and will take birth in, he will take birth in Puri. So, Vasubhanvi Devi very near and dear to Bhasa Bhangi, Srimati Radhika, Srila Prabhupada was there. And that is why the chariot of Jagannade in that court festival has stopped for three days. And it was Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the father of war, who brought from his house Srila Bhimlananda. At first he was not, not name was not Bhimlananda. Name was not kept. And he brought because any lady cannot come and they can ride on chariot of Jagannath. Even they cannot touch. There is a rule and regulation there. So he, he, it was Bhakti Vinod Thakur who brought that child and he was on the chariot and since this is goblet came down and it was given to Srila Bhakti Thakur and also Annaprasan was given to Grand Ceremony Grand Ceremony that we did last night Srila Bhakti Thakur so from Pandas, the remnant of Jagannath, and he gave in his mouth and kept name that only by the mercy of Bhimala Devi, the Saurabh Shakti of Jagannath, he has come in my house. That is why he kept name Bhimala Prasha. After that, so many strange things Again. After that, when he came down from the chariot, at once after three days, breath began to run so quickly, quickly. So all were astonished to see the miracle. miracle. Hmm? After that he was nourished at Puri. Bhakti Minot Thakur was a government officer. His service was changeable, sometimes here and there. So Prabhupada walked with him so many places. But 
भक्ति पुनो ठाकुर है देर इज सो मच अटैचमेंट विद पूरी फ्रेंड दिस बॉय वॉज ऑफ थ्री फोर इयर्स इज ऑल्सो ब्रिलियन He used to take Shrimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrit Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu books wherever Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur is used to go and give classes. And very patiently he used to hear all these things. When he became the age of five, uh, anywhere in Calcutta, he now must stand in the Jara Thakura. भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर जी एखने था आई डोंट रिमेम्बर द प्लेस पर भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर विथ फैमिली यूज टू बी देयर देन एवॉल्व फॉर मेकिंग बिल्डिंग फ्रॉम वॉल्व वॉज डिफेक्टिव भक्ति भगवान भक्ति भवन भक्ति भवन वॉट गार्डन भक्ति भवन नॉट एनी गार्डन सो इन टेकिंग वॉल एट दिग्रा ऑफ निशिंग देव के मॉल खुरमा नो नो नियर चेतपुर रोड आई I am missing. I then Bhakti Mano Thakur at once he gave Hari Nam and then little as three four years and here when this Vigra came oh he should be given Diksha so he gave mantra name is himself Krishna to purify name to have a relation with Krishna. Diksha mantra is given to purify one and to have a relation. Now have all powers, but without relation, it will be so late. So for purification, Diksha is given of mantra. So what the minute Thakur gave him also, Nishing mantra and mantra in Diksha. Diksha of Nishing Mantra, and he began to worship Nishing Hadev. After that, Sri Bhakti Vinod Thakur gave him in Sanskrit school near Calcutta. At that time, Bengal was very, very famous, famous place for Sanskrit study, and very soon. At the day of nine, all the pandits of Bengal they selected him, this boy Vimalananda, Vimala Prasad, and they thought, "Hey, he is big astrologer now. He has become hmm? so, and he know knew all the siddhant of established the truth of astrology. astrology. So they gave the surname." सिद्धांत बट नॉट भक्ति सिद्धांत सिद्धांत आफ्टर दैट मल्ली फॉर स्ट्रॉलॉजी इट वॉज गिवेन एंड ही वॉज सो ब्रिलियंट दैट इवन दशुतोष वाइस चांसलर कलकत्ता यूनिवर्सिटी वाइस चांसलर कलकत्ता पोस्ट ऑफ एस्ट्रोलॉजी हाइएस्ट पोस्ट to this bhakti siddhan uh, siddhan sarasvati but he told that i am not come to count the stars, stars in the sky and the dust particles of this world earth i have not come for this i cannot accept this thing. i come to sar krishna and radha and jugal mahaprabhu and to preach all these things so he never accept this post was kept so much For so a long period, empty, but he could not. He never accepted. Then he had uh, some quarrel with the professor and teachers in his college also and the Sanskrit college also. 
and he cut the all the arguments of the professors and principals, and he left the school. Then Bhakti Vinod Thakur uh, wanted to uh, his mother, uh, Bhak, the mother of Sula Prabhupada and brothers. They wanted that he should earn some money, but Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was not interested in this. They opened a, a medical store for Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Bhimlanan Saraswati. And he went like Swamiji, and after some time it was failed. Then he was sent to Kashim Bajar in East Bengal. The king of Kashim Bajar was a bhakta. He wanted that his boy should be learn something like in Vaishnav etiquette. And he was a friend of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So he requested that I want that any good teacher should be sent for my boy. Bhakti Vinod Thakur told his son, Vimlan, can you go there? And for some time there is a very big library of Vaishnav library. You can go and read and also you can teach, teach that boy. He went there and at that time one rupee has so much value, so much value, like England pond. <coughs> and at that time he, he made a salary of three hundred rupees. So you can see that how much it was. Very high salary. He began to teach boy. But oh, very soon the boy became like Vaishnava. He began, began to chant her name. He was going to be a renounced sannyasi. No attachment for his mother, father, brother, or for wealth or anything. Then his mother wanted to take poison and he told that to his husband, that if this this young person, Bhimlanand, is teaching the, my boy, then he will be renounced. So I will take first and I will die. Then his all associates also they told to king, and at last king told that I will give you three hundred rupees per month. Same. But uh, they don't, anyone don't want that you should teach my God. Prabhupada became so happy. And in the meantime, in four or five months, he read all the books from top to bottom, Ved, Upanishad, Shastra, and all the books of Srila Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, and all books. Very big there was library. In four months he quickly read all of the books. And he returned to Mayapur. Bhakti Vinod Thakur was happy that he is getting 300 rupees salary and his mother was also. But he refused, I don't want to take any pies of these dishes. Never I will take. So he refused. Then Bhakti Vinod Thakur thought of what should I do? Then he made him at a Jamindari. Jamindari you know? He buyed, he buyed some land in Mayapur that you see. Uh, the birth place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He buyed and then he in case Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in Jodh Peet and made a heart. <coughs> and in that heart, Gaur Vishnu Priya, Pancha Tattva and Radha Krishna both, they were established there. There was none. Only Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur used to come sometimes. 
after that, Srila Bhakti Bhano Thakur resigned and came to Godrum and established a bhajan kuti there. And there Srila Bhakti Srodas Maharaj used to come. And there was a very good discourses of bhakti there. Sometimes Prabhupada used to come there. And when Gorku Srodas Bhagavad was there, he used to hear all the discourses between Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Gorku Srodas And he was so much attracted to Srila Gorku Srodas And then he made up mind that I should make my spiritual guru Srila Though he knew that Bhakti Vinod Thakur is so high, but people will think that, oh, he is his father. But Srila Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasita never uh, understand like this. He always respect me. Especially he used to know that Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is also bhag, in Bhagavad Parampara guru of Srila Bhakti Shokdash Baba He knew. So he determined, he was determined to be this disciple of Srila. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur is Bhagavad Parampara, he is Guru to Prabhupada. And also Bhakti uh, Gopi Shodas Bhavaji in Guru Parampara. I have cleared it in my article. It may be come out very soon. So, how he took initiation from Srila Prabhupada? He has told, Namin Krishna has told, and now it is going to very right. uh, time, so I will just take something there. So you should be satisfied by this, and we will just take there. Go, Want to speak something? No, no, no. No, no, you should speak. <laughs> oh, you are tired because you are so strong. You are tired? Bring, bring. You should also try to correct something. You should try to correct something. I have never seen and I have never heard like you told about mango to Prabhupada. Really? Never I heard. And it is quite, I think that it is quite false. <laughs> A renowned person like Prabhupada, how he will do and take anything which is not given to Thakur? He can never do that. But he has stopped to take mango. There is something reason, another reason I will explain. <laughs> there are so many things that uh, nowadays going up here. Imagination, so many. So don't come in imagination. You should say. No, no, I don't want to. No, no, you say. No. Oh, you are a very. What kind of journalist you are? What is this? This is, this is, I found out how to. Oh. No, good. Oh, you are a journalist. What is this? You should say. What is this? You should say. You are a journalist. Oh. What he wants to give Guru there. <laughs> what is this? This is all the lectures. This is all the lectures from your email. So here I compiled it. So I want to know when they. Where you got? From the internet. Eh? Oh, email oh. oh, very good. The shower of love. I don't know if I can tell you. The shower of love. A collection of lectures by Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj. Recent tour to Asia and the Western countries during the early part of 1998. Very good. Go to Nanam I want that you should write so many books. From my collection, you are journalist, you can so much um, preach my mission. And your husband should always help you in this. <laughs> <laughs> no? And 
new new books should come and you should help in my preaching also and in my in my yeah prakash publication publication my heartly blessings to you gaur pramanand right it has not come out anywhere no, i just want to give it to you as an open first and then after that uh, what kind of a form you want it whether magazine or something like that you know so i think it may be and like in any book in a book form yeah okay Because you have I, another copy with you uh, i have it all in the internet huh? i have it all in the internet you can get it but the photograph is only one <laughs> so we will give it to